Hi all, welcome to Zoology Made Easy. Today our topic is enzymes. These enzymes were initially, when they were discovered, they were called as the ferments. They were called as the ferments and these ferments, let us say enzymes were first discovered by Bushner. They were discovered by Bushner. And this is not an intentional discovery, yeah, but accidentally. You can say they have been accidentally discovered. And in yeast samples, they have been accidentally discovered in yeast samples. Or let us say yeast extract. And also the first enzyme which has been isolated, first enzyme isolated in the year 1903 for which Nobel Prize has been awarded, for which the Nobel Prize has been awarded and it is the same Vishnu. When we speak about inter, intracellular structure, cell alone, one cell alone will comprise around 5000 of chemicals. 5000 number of chemicals on an average are present within the cell or they are secreted by living cells so that they can perform to perform extracellular catalysis extracellular catalysis this will be the usual function of enzymes the extracellular catalysis we can take the example of any digestive enzymes all these digestive enzymes they function extracellularly only Artificially also they are being prepared now. We can go with the example renin tablets. People who have uh, infants usually who have the problem with the digestion of proteins, milk proteins, they are substituted with these renin tablets. So the importance of these uh, renin tablets is, this is for coagulating the milk for coagulating milk protein. What is the name of the milk protein? It is the casein. So it is to coagulate the milk protein in infants called as the casein. And also <clears throat> the same renin tablets also will be used in the preparation of cheese and other milk products preparation of cheese and other milk products. We said in enzymes were initially called as ferments. Then who is the person who called uh, them as enzymes? Enzyme, the term enzyme has been given by has been given by Kuhne and has been given by the scientist Kuhne. <clears throat> when we say enzymes, uh, based on their function, these can be broadly classified into two different regions. Enzymes which are functional outside the uh, living cell, they are called as exoenzymes and which are functional inside the cell, they are called as endoenzymes. Endo means always inside, exo is always outside. 
so we can say that these exoenzymes usually they'll be functional they are functional outside the living cells outside the living cells and endoenzymes are functional inside the living cells can anyone give any example of exoenzymes the best one is the tears the tears do possess certain enzymes called as the lysozymes which can lyse the cell wall of any infective agent so that is the reason they are called as lysozymes not only this we also have digestive enzymes just in the above uh, paragraph we have seen digestive juices or the digestive enzymes here we can refer to this point they are ex they undergo extra cellular catalysis <clears throat> when it comes to the endoenzymes which are functional inside the cell we can go with the example of enzymes involved in krebs cycle krebs cycle is one of the phases in the respiration and <clears throat> the enzymes which are involved in completion of this krebs cycle uh, they are the examples of the endo enzymes first of all let us say what is this enzyme whatever may be the classification whether it is exo enzyme endo enzyme depending on its function let us see what are these enzymes first whenever we are saying the term enzyme we need to remember these all are proteinaceous in nature these all are proteinaceous or proteins excepting there are two exceptions uh, of enzymes which are not proteins except ribozyme and ribonuclease ribozyme and ribonuclease and the scientist who extracted this ribozyme used the sample of the organism tetrahymena and the ribonite nuclease was discovered by altman in bacteria so we said these are our proteins then what is their function function is in simple words we can define enzymes are the proteins which can catalyze the biochemical reactions which can catalyze the biochemical reactions in living cells for this reason as they are catalyzing the biochemical reactions in the living cells for this matter they are also called as the biocatalyst for this matter these enzymes are called as as they are catalyzing the biochemical reactions they are called as the biocatalysts they are called as the biocatalysts uh you might have already studied about the structure of the proteins proteins will generally contain uh, different sites of their action it may be the primary site secondary uh, primary structure secondary structure and tertiary structure as enzymes are proteins naturally these enzymes also will possess the primary secondary and tertiary structure so we can write an enzyme contains the secondary and 
tertiary structures you can question me why there is no primary structure for an enzyme when compared with a usual protein enzyme is little bit complicated for that matter there is no primary structure primary structure means the straight chain of amino acids but here it is not straight chain if at all we are saying secondary it can be alpha helical structure alpha helix or beta pleated and when we are saying tertiary structure it is highly folded especially in the tertiary structure when it is folded the protein chain will fold upon itself forming a sort of ball like structure what will happen here in this folded chain like structure chains criss crosses itself the chain the chain criss crosses itself because of this criss crossing certain sorts of elevation and depressions are formed this leads to formation of elevations and depressions of course here we don't use this terminology the elevations and depressions they are called as the crevices elevations are called as the crevices whereas the depressions are called as the pockets the depressions are called as the pockets whereas elevations are called as the crevices and here in this a pocket there will be a site called as an active site this active site is responsible for the enzymatic action it is responsible for the enzymatic action what is this enzymatic action it is nothing but the catalysis of biochemical reaction the catalysis of biochemical reaction and this active site is also the region this is the region where the substrate fits that means the substrate comes and fits into the active site so that the enzymatic action will be initiated over the substrate for example in your 10th standard you have studied about different digestive enzymes let us consider one simple example maltose the maltose sugar the maltose is a sugar which will be converted into two glucose units which will be converted into two glucose units in the presence of the enzyme maltase right so what is happening over here actually maltose is called as a substrate and glucose units they are called as the products and here maltase is an enzyme what is this enzyme doing here this enzyme will have an active site within its pocket and this active site will act upon this substrate the maltose so that it is getting converted into two glucose units so this way the enzyme activity is present for most or i can say all of the enzymes they follow the similar mechanism when we are saying uh enzymes when we are saying about enzymes enzymes are usually organic in nature 
whereas there also occurs a certain non organic catalyst too enzymes these are all organic in nature so they can be called as organic catalysts but when it comes to certain other components like inorganic catalysts these inorganic catalysts are usually certain chemicals or i can say metals nickel is the most common inorganic catalyst element apart from these platinum is also used palladium all these are the metals which are used as inorganic catalyst and occurs outside the living cells outside the living cells they are never present inside the living cells but when it comes to organic catalyst or enzymes they are all present inside the living cells um if at all we are speaking about uh, the activity of enzymes these are uh, exhibit the optimum activity the optimum activity is till 45 degrees centigrade after that they start degenerating they degenerate above the temperature but again there is one uh exception here there are certain enzymes which are extracted from thermophilic organisms thermophilic organisms these enzymes are also called as thermophilic enzymes only these thermophilic uh, enzymes they can even exhibit their maximum activity about 80 to 90 degrees centigrade temperature too. and such a property of enzymes is called as the thermal stability it is called as the thermal stability that means at even very high temperatures too the enzymes activity is stable uh there is one particular organism where this thermophilic or enzymes are extracted we can take the example of the thermophilus aquaticus the thermophilus aquaticus is a bacteria from which the enzyme is extracted then what is the enzyme that is extracted from this organism the thermophilus aquaticus the enzyme extracted is called as the tac polymerase tac polymerase is the enzyme that is extracted from the thermophilus aquaticus bacteria and this plays a very important role in biotechnology in biotechnological applications where you are separating or studying certain samples of genetics or any other dna samples tac polymerase is widely used so this is the end of introduction of the topic enzymes In the next topic we'll be discussing about the chemical reactions of enzymes as well as how the enzymes will exhibit their biochemical reaction or catalyze the biochemical reaction and also we'll discuss about the types of enzymes thank you